Hello. You're going to have to continue to excuse my voice here as I'm continuing to suffer from a cold that I've been suffering for, for in making recent videos. In this video, we're going to continue to look at the idea of a continuous annuity and look at a problem from, from the uh, second edition of The Theory of Interest by Stephen Kellison, instead of our usual practice of looking at problems from the Mathematics of Investment and Credit, sixth edition by Samuel Broberman. Uh, because, again, I think Kellison has nicer and simpler problems related to continuous annuities. The goal here is to find the force of interest, delta, when the present and future values of a continuous annuity are known. Very pr short problem statement here. If the present value of a continuous annuity paid over, say, n years, n units of time, I'm going to go ahead and assume time is in, n, in years, even though it doesn't say it here. If that present value is 4, and the future value of such an annuity, evaluated at time n, is 12, find delta, find the force of interest, and again, to keep things simple, I'll think about time as being in years. All right, so what's going on here? I talked about this in the last video. We've got the time axis here, and we've got the cash flow axis up here. The assumption with these symbols is the cash flow is in one unit of money per unit of time. Again, I'll take time to be years to be specific, though I don't have to. And I'll take cash flow to be, say, dollars per year to be something specific. It's not $2,400 per year like the last video. It's $1 per year. Not very much, I know. <clears throat> Over the course of n years. So this is going to correspond to, you know, a certain amount of money per day, per per hour, per minute, per second, per millisecond. It's the ideal idea of a continuous cash flow. Um, you know, not necessarily seemingly very practical because that doesn't typically happen, but it is worth thinking about. We want to think about the present and future values of this cash flow at time zero and at time n. Let's think about an arbitrary time t here, like in the last video, and imagine a tiny amount of time elapsing. Call that time a tiny amount of time elapsing dt. The symbolism for the idea of an infinitesimally small quantity, which again in the standard real number system does not exist, but is helpful to pretend and get to the answer as quickly as possible. What is the tiny amount of money that is flowing during that tiny amount of time? It would be the flow rate times the amount of time elapsed, which is really the area of a really super skinny rectangle here. It would be $1 per year times dt years. The years cancel, giving you dt dollars. What's the tiny present value? dpv of such a tiny amount of money at time t, we would need to discount it back in time to time zero, present value at time zero, use the dis present value discount factor v and raise it to the amount of time, t power there. So dpv is going to be um, v to the t dA, which is the same thing as v to the t dt, and this would be in dollars, I used that in the last video. We also are going to want to think about future value in this video. What's the tiny future value of that tiny amount of money paid out over a shorter time, amount of time, dt, starting at time t? I need to promote that in time to time n by multiplying by the growth rate, 1 plus i, raised to the amount of time I'm promoting it in time. That's not t years, that's n minus t years, so the power here is n minus t. So I get 1 plus i to the n minus t dA, which will be the same thing as 1 plus i to the n minus t dt. And that will be in dollars as well. All right. Now, how do you go from this to the actual present and future values of the entire income stream? You integrate. You add these up. That's the idea of integration. A bar sub n is the present value at time zero of the entire income stream. That's found by integrating dpv, integrating this thing here, over the amount of time that the income stream is valid for from zero to n. This is the integral to do. You can also write that in terms of the number e. You can recall that uh, v is 
e to the negative delta, where delta is the force of interest. That is the same delta as we are trying to solve for. So we can write this as the integral from 0 to n of e to the negative, uh, negative delta t dt. I'm also going to write an integral for the future value. I want to say I'm not going to take the time to actually do these integrals in this video. That would be a good exercise for you. Um, you know, you might want to if you you might want to do it with the e, and if you do it with the e, you might want to use a substitution like letting u equal delta times t or negative delta times t. It doesn't matter. In the end, uh, here are the two typical ways to write the answer for the present value: one minus v to the n over delta, or one minus e to the negative delta times n over delta. Either of those is fine, and they're both correct as the present value. Again, that would be, be a good exercise for you to do. How about the future value? Evaluate it at time n of this continuous income stream, then I need to add up the dfvs. I need to integrate this thing from 0 to n. Integrate 1 plus i to the n minus t. Or, if you prefer, integrate from 0 to n e to the positive delta times n minus t dt. And if you do either of those integrals, you'll typically see the answer written in one of two ways again. Either 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over delta, or e to the delta times n minus 1 over delta. Both of those are the same and are equal to the future value. All right, now we need to do the problem. Go back up here and use your givens. 4 equals the present value. Let me go ahead and use this form and, and this form. Solve the problem. I, I don't have to. Um, so this is going to equal 1 minus v, then v to the n over delta. And then the future value is 12. 12 equals Sn bar. That equals 1 plus i to the n minus uh, 1 over delta. So we've got two equations and two unknowns. We want to ultimately solve for delta. The unknowns, well, actually there's three unknowns in, this, in a sense. There's delta n and 1 plus i, which if you find 1 plus i, you'll also find v. So it's not clear, actually, that we can solve this, but it does turn out that we can. Um, my initial thought was to divide one equation by the other, but that turned out to kind of be a dead end. It turns out a better thing to do is to solve this equation for v to the n and solve this equation for 1 plus i to the n, and then use the relationship between v to the n and I, 1 plus i to the n to relate, to get an equation that only involves delta. So multiply both sides of this equation by delta, which gives 4 delta is 1 minus v to the n. Subtract 4 delta from both sides and add v to the n to both sides, and you'll get v to the n is 1 minus 4 delta. Solve this equation uh, first by multiplying both sides by delta to get 12 delta is 1 plus i to the n minus 1, and therefore 1 plus i to the n would equal 1 plus 12 delta. But v is the reciprocal of 1 plus i. And therefore, v to the n is the reciprocal of 1 plus i to the n. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can say these two things involving delta are reciprocals of each other. I can say 1 minus 4, 4 delta is 1 over 1 plus 12 delta. And that's going to give me a quadratic equation in delta. I can multiply both sides by 1 plus 12 delta. To get this, go ahead and multiply that out. I'll get negative 48 delta squared, <coughs> excuse me again, plus 12 delta minus 4 delta is plus 8 delta, and then plus 1 equals 1. We don't need the quadratic formula here. We can write this as 8 delta times 1 minus uh, 6 delta equals 0, so that delta is 0, which can't happen. We pick the positive root. 1 minus 6 delta is 0, so delta is 1 sixth. 
and that is the correct answer. That is the force of interest for this problem based on the givens. Okay, so I thought it was worth rethinking about the idea of a cash flow. Again, you should take as an exercise deriving these equations for the present and future values of these income streams. Uh, maybe let me just end the video by reminding you that if you, you know, if you integrate something like v to the t, let me just write this as an indefinite integral, you're going to get, with this particular ca case, v to the t over natural log of v plus c. And you may also want to recall that that means, I mean, using this equation, delta is the opposite of the natural log of v. It's also the natural log of 1 plus i. Those are good things to remember as well in case you've forgotten.